Hey, it's Mike Dance with Brookside in Austin, Texas, where we work with people on talk, chat, video, and connectivity solutions for their business. We actually work with 200 plus providers and carriers that help you find the best possible solution to fit your particular needs as it comes to all those different categories. It's really simple. You, you know, basically all these companies fall into certain categories, whether it's Unified Communications as a service, Contact Centers as a service, these are both cloud-based, you know, alternatives. Uh, Enterprise video, you know, everything's pretty much going to the cloud. But to get to the cloud, you got to have good internet connectivity. That's where we can also help because we have relationships with all the major carriers and with some aggregators. We get the best possible price on, you know, both the solution as well as help you get the best bandwidth from the carrier, the best price. So when you start looking at all these companies, where are they all located? I mean, for the most part, they're all located all over the country. So when you start looking at some of the bigger ones that are, you know, the ones that are in the Gartner. Uh, you know, Magic Quadrant, they're all over the country. I mean, they're, you know, on the East Coast or the West Coast. I mean, but for the most part, they're not in Texas other than Mitel. Mitel bought Shortel a couple years ago when they did, they gave them entrance into the market. Uh, they already had a corporate office in Dallas. Uh, they're pretty much their U.S. headquarters is in Dallas. And in Austin, that's where all the tech support people, that's where your support calls go. That's where, you know, that's where it was all developed. Uh, a lot of the cloud-based solutions that we're actually selling today. Uh, so really, where does your money go, you know, whenever you do sign up with one of these providers like Ring Central 8x8 or one of these guys? Well, it goes to California or it goes to, you know, uh, the East Coast somewhere. Everywhere but Austin, you know, and hey, we love Austin, don't we? <laughs> In case you forgot, there's the bridge. Uh, what do you call for support? I mean, think about it, you know, uh, when you're calling these companies, what do you think you're calling? Everywhere but Austin, Texas, you know, once again, if we forget about Austin, that's where we are for the most part. I mean, that's where we want to try to support locally what we're doing. But at the end of the day, we also look for something secure. So a lot of these, a lot of these solutions really aren't secure. You know, they're not. They're using SIP phones and SIP phones like the Polycoms and the Yalinks and the Grand Streams and the uh, Snome. There's a bunch of them out there. They don't really have encryption. So your IT vendor or your department has to work around that because you know, encryption is a huge issue. There's several articles if you do any research about it. You know, SIP trunks can, can SIP trunks and SIP phones be hacked? Yeah, like any other you know, system, they can all be hacked because there's no encryption. <laughs> you know, and so uh, you know they can eavesdrop, they can listen in. You know, so without encryption, it's easy to hack. And Russian hackers can get into your system and listen and do all kinds of things. So voice over IP attacks are on the rise. You know, this is these are recent articles. You know, and recent information. This is not old. So I mean, over fifty one percent of the the targeted voice over IP protocols by hackers is SIP. You know, the other half is Cisco. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you know, since it's all on the internet, it's open. It's open to anybody. Uh, you know, with the, when we were talking about the cloud solutions, we also have other solutions that are more private cloud where people can't just have access to your data, but that's what's going on here. I mean, you know, because you start looking at, you know, what's voice over IP's biggest security problem? SIP. You know, this may not sound like a security issue, but in fact it is. It's because SIP was originally designed, wasn't originally designed to be secure, which means it's easy to be hacked. You know, you see that there's all kinds of articles if you look out there where they talk about, you know, how, you know, the proprietary information can be stolen and used against you, you know, with ransomware. There's multiple, five telltale signs that, you know, your voice over IP system's been hacked. And what we can know, the hackers can commit extortion and fraud as well as eavesdrop boardroom conference calls. I mean, think about that. Anybody can listen to anybody's calls. So security issues with SIP phones is a big issue. You know, uh, like I said, it makes it easier on people. And, and most of the carriers, I mean, most of the providers, like even Microsoft Teams and Zoom and Fuse and Cisco, Ring Central, everybody, they all use SIP phones. They're all easy to hack. Bottom line, they're not going to tell you that. How does Mitel handle security? Well, it's a little different. What they do is they, they make their own phones. So they go ahead and put AES 256-bit encryption in there, which is you know one of the strongest, uh, I mean, it's the industry standard for encryption for voice and things of that nature. So it takes literally billions of years to break this encryption. So it tells you kind of how strong it is. On soft phones, video, and the apps, uh, it uses WebRTC, which just means you're not opening up a, you know, you're opening up a browser, you're not opening up, um, you know, a, a, an app that you have to download, install, and keep track of. So by being on the, the, the web, it's a free open source standard that allows you to be able to have uh, anything except, except, you know, securely accessed through a 
browser interface. That's what WebRTC, and, and, and not everybody has it. I think some of the people who are starting to adapt it is clearly where things are going. You know, it's HIPAA compliant, it's got, you know, uh, SOC compliant, everything. And so it, it's actually secured. So we started talking about some of these companies, where are their data centers? I mean, that's a big deal. Whenever you're making a phone call, your phone calls now in the cloud have got to go out through a data center somewhere. You know, I mean, Ring Central's got two of them, one on each coast. You know, uh, as far as data centers around the world, they've got eight. But I don't see on the map that they provide on the website where the ones are in Russia and the UK or Ukraine, wherever they've got them over there, because that's where all the product was developed and where the main servers are um, over in Russia. Zoom, uh, you know, they got five data centers around the country, you know, and they've got, you know, a handful of them, uh, eight of them around the world. Once again, they don't show the ones in China, which is the ones that probably the biggest concern between Ring Central being almost a Russian owned company by, run by Russians and then Zoom being predominantly kind of more of a Chinese based company but with everything being on servers in China, you know, it's kind of a, kind of an issue I would think for security. Dialpad's another one. They got four data centers around the world. Uh, 10, I mean, excuse me, four in the U S 10 around the world. Uh, once again, they're kind of an up and coming smaller company, but, but I think it comes back around to buying local. I mean, you know, if you can buy local, why would you not want to support the local economy uh, here in Austin, Texas, you know, Brookside's local, as well as Mitel. Uh, Mitel is a big player. I mean, they've got over 5 million cloud users. Uh, that That's the biggest, they're the biggest in the industry in the world. Um, they've got, you know, offices all over the United States. You know, you see there's everywhere, including Austin and Dallas, like we talked about. They've got offices all over the world. These are all offices that they have out there. So they're, they're a very, very large company. And, and, and basically what they do is a lot of their cloud stuff, they use the Google Cloud Platform. And the benefits to the Google Cloud Platform are huge. First of all, they got 24 data centers around the world. That's more than anybody else has by at least twice as many. And then they got 13, once again, more than twice as many data centers around the U.S. So all your calls are connecting back there. You've got, you know, really good, you know, service level agreement that's available for high availability. It's got the industry's best security. There's no question, especially people you, when you're competing against people using SIP phones, which are can't be encrypted. <laughs> uh, then they got, you know, basically you're, it's all HIPAA and SOC compliant. It's in the cloud, um, you know, standard, it, it's completely standardized, so it's very easy to scale. So Mitel is basically their office is out by River Place, um, you know, and they're very much a local company that is hiring right now. They've got a lot of positions out there from, you know, network engineers uh, to cloud network engineers, you know, network operator, you know, it, it, just all different types of jobs in Austin. So it's a good one if you're just looking for a job. The history of Mitel is very interesting because they've acquired a bunch of companies in an industry that is just full of acquisitions. That's nine out of 10 of these companies were, have been acquired by somebody at some point or, or going to be. So what they've done is they've kind of stuck with, you know, being, since 1973 when they started as Mike and Terry's lawnmowers, you know, they bought Intertel, Astra out of Europe, you know, Toshiba, uh, their phone business, uh, Prairie Fire and Oasis or contact center solutions that are amazing. We're already working with the Mitel Enterprise Contact Center, but have been now they're owned by Mitel. And then of course they bought Shortel, which is one of their competitors for, you know, for half a billion dollars, you know, back in, eight, in 2018. So now everything pretty much uh, is, is here in Austin. Um, you know, uh, you know, basically back in, you know, uh, they, in 2018, they were acquired by a private equity company. So they are 100% private and they're in acquisition mode and growing and getting better all the time. In my opinion, they've got over a hundred, they're operating over a hundred countries, over 1.3 billion in revenue, 5 million users, like we talked about, 70 million end users. And they're number one in so many categories from private cloud to market sharing, total cloud, and even in unified communications in Europe. And then of course, they're also in the magic quadrant, which is a big deal with Gartner. So Gartner, you know, basically goes in and they, they do a magic quadrant where they tell you the good, bad, and ugly. And, and these magic quadrants, a lot of this information is on brooksideus.com. Uh, under learn, but you've got, you know, they're, they're a leader in five categories, which is huge. And they have been for four or five years, at least, you know, since they've been doing this. So they're very much a big player with, you know, like I said, 70 million users across the globe with 35% of those being in the United States. It's a big company. So they've gotten a lot of awards. They actually are the, the you know, the, the preferred provider for major league baseball. So all the stadiums have Mitel systems in them that they all communicate between the bullpen and the, and the, uh, and the coaches. Uh, they're, they're big with CIO applications. They were the best Newsweek picking one of the best business tools. And then they've achieved, you know, a lot of different awards and things, you know, and, and leadership recognition, you know, along with Microsoft and Cisco and pretty hell, you know, that's back in 2017. And then basically, you know, today, you know, they've got a lot of the baseball and football and basketball and soccer and 
hockey teams out there. I mean, they've got their stadiums. They're real big in the stadium world. They just completed one for the Texas Rangers, which would be their first year, the new Globe Life Field up in, uh, in Arlington. So, I mean, as you can see, it's going to be a nice stadium. It's got all my tell everything in it, uh, you know, as far as communications. Um, as you can see, all the dugouts, like I said, have my tell phones in them. So, that, that's a big deal. So uh, the big thing about Mitel is, you know, what's best for you. You know, they have private cloud and public cloud. Most people just have one solution and it's in a public cloud where it's a multi-tenant shared environment. You know, uh, Mitel offers both private cloud and public cloud, which is kind of different. So, you know, if you want a box installed on site, we've got a couple different, you know, one for small and medium business and one for enterprise. Uh, you can put it in your data center, which works out great. You know, I mean, VMware, Hyper-V, the one is just another application with software only, uh, or in the Google Cloud, you know, with the MyTel, MyCloud Connect solution. And so regardless of which, which solution that you choose, you're going to wind up with these really cool phones that have built-in encryption, which is a huge deal. And they've got wireless handsets and headsets and integration to your cell phones. I mean, they're very feature-rich. Now, when you start talking about in your customer data center, uh, it's my voice business. Anything my voice that doesn't have the cloud name in it is going to be something that can be installed on site. So this is a software only solution that we would sell people that have VMware and already have a data center. And, you know, we would add some SIP trunks to it. And next thing you know, you've got voice, you've got messaging, mobility, presence, and IM, any of the contact centers to have audio, web, and video conferencing. Everything all rolled into a single license for each user. It works out very well. I mean, it goes from, you know, five to 130,000 users, single site, multi-site. This is like their enterprise grade, you know, on-site, uh, excuse me, this is software only in the cloud. They also offer ability to put a box in. A box can have analog cards and PRI cards. You know, this is the kind of stuff we put in counties and cities and places where they want a box, you know, that's going to be, you know, uh, you know something that they can maintain and manage on their network and, and watch for security purposes. Because, you know, you can basically deploy this thing, you know, uh, in your network like this using VM, this shows VMware, uh, and put PRIs in there for backup, but you've got all the ability to put your phones anywhere out there and have them all connect back, you know, to a centralized solution, software solution in a, in a dedicated instance in your VMware, uh, you, you know, uh, sh you know, store, whatever you want to call it. So basically it's got resiliency and high availability. It uses kind of really more of the VMware tools, but you know, you've got the ability for there to be multiple servers and to basically never go down. So you've got a primary secondary and then, you know, a primary rebuild. I'm not sure what this, but it also all together, it offers high availability, which means it never goes down. This is one we designed just to give you an idea and kind of copy from them. This is what we're doing at Hayes County. Where we're looking at migrating, you know, about an old, close to a thousand users into the cloud from uh, remote sites. And so that's kind of what a lot of people are doing. They, you know, if they want the private cloud, they don't want to share with anybody. They want to be able to not have it automatically be, um, you know, have, have maintenance go down for me. But like a lot of cloud solutions, this is a private cloud system. So you own and control everything on, and you can buy it or lease it. So you're not paying for it forever. Um, and, and, and either way, you know, you look at your choice is going to be between desktop or mobile. Those are the big choices that we have now. What happens is when you start looking at the cloud, now we start talking about the MyCloud Connect, okay? And so that is an all-in-one talk, chat, and video collaboration solution starting around 20 bucks a user a month that does everything, includes free phones. Um, you know, it's got awesome secure, secure IP phones. That's a big deal. It's got web and video conferencing, very easy to use apps. It'll integrate with also with, with things like Teams and, and Slack and, uh, you know, any of the ones that you've got out there that, that need to be integrated into your phone system, more or less. Enterprise Contact Center, team collaboration with workspaces, you know, but once again, very similar to Slack and Teams, and native integrations to all your business apps. Helps. There's an the admin tool that you get that goes with it, allows you to be able to program every user and everything the way you want to, e and or you can have people remotely do it for you at Mitel. So that's part of the solution when you go down the cloud path is they'll do everything for you in the cloud, whatever you need to get done 24-7. Mitel's MyCloud is a very secure solution. Like I said, it's 256 bit encryption means that no one's going to be able to you know, listen to your calls. Uh, WebRTC is going to make sure everything goes very smoothly without having to install apps. It makes it work more efficient. But as you can see, many certifications on there from HIPAA to you know, across the board to SOC to, you know, government regulate, reg, you know, meets government regulations. So the software is really cool. I mean, basically it comes on your system. It's all supported directly by Mitel and you've got, you know, basically the connect app, which will go on any device and provide presence, I am web and video on Apple, Android, Microsoft, pretty much anything. Uh, you've got integration to, you know, 
email and your other collaboration apps, you know, things like, you know, uh, everything from Teams and Zoom, you know, down the road to Microsoft, uh, I mean, to Google, uh, you know, Meet. And it, there's just so many different ways we can, that it just works with everything that's going to be out there that's common. Um, you know, so the Connect, and it works on mobile apps. So, so everything looks the same on any device. You've got the Teamwork app, which gives you collaboration. Business SMS, which is pretty cool. So you can see text from the app. And, and, it doesn't, and it's not coming from your personal cell phone. And then they've got full blown HD video. And then I think the coolest thing are the cordless handsets and headsets. I mean, they really take that phone and make it where you can, you're mobile, and, and as well as with the integration to the mobile phones. So, really, how many programs do your people have to log into every day just to communicate and collaborate? I mean, the average you know, user is somewhere around 17, with three or four of them being collaboration tools that kind of overlap. You know, with Mitel, they've got a single login for talk, chat, and video. My Cloud Connect. It gets you into teamwork, my team meetings, everything. All these products were all developed here in Austin, Texas. I mean, it's so that's and supported right now today. When you call the you're calling for support, you're getting people in Austin, Texas most of the time. Um, on this, it's got regular PBX features, which is also unique. You know, like paging through the phones and all those things that sometimes you don't get with the cloud-based solution. But it's it's written around uh, the short tail phone system that was used by many businesses, and so they they just did a cloud-based version of that and added some features capabilities to it, uh, including, you know, uh, these different tabs, the event tab where you can get into audio. That's how you schedule conferencing, screen sharing. Um, you can have an agenda tracker, which is really cool. And then you've got single click access to everything. So it, it's very few keys for you to set up a conference and invite somebody. And it's even less. They just click on one link and they're into your video or web or audio conference. So it's super easy from any device to be able to connect without a bunch of digits and stuff that's required. So when you have the app running on your desktop, it looks like this. You've got, you know, multiple choices there. You've got, this is where you do your programming more or less. Uh, you've got, uh, I mean, access into the, the programming, but you see at the bottom there under my conference, you know, what it's got is it's got the ability to have your own conference bridge. So this is my conference bridge. I can use it anytime I want to. I can connect or I can send a copy of it or I, I do a link, but that, that's how that works out very well to having your own conference bridge for every user. These are all my contacts. As you see, as I move down the toolbar, you got your different contacts. You can put them in groups. Uh, you've got all these are all the different calls that have been made back and forth. You know that you know that we did, and then and then on here, what I've got is I've got basically uh, uh, the ability to see voicemails. So these are all voicemails that I've received, and then we move into the teamwork, which teamwork is going to take you into collaboration and, and assign tasks, and you know like very similar to Slack. You know, but it also has the ability to just one click, bring people all together for uh, video, web collaboration, whatever you need, screen sharing. But I mean, once again, this is all part of a single login. Uh, in Teamwork, what you also get is the ability to put a lot of files and things. So like you see in this one, what I've, what I've got, I've got a Spectrum a signed contract there for their, for their fiber. Then I've got a signed contract for the Mitel phones for a, a country club that we're doing here in Austin, Texas. But you, you know, now everybody goes back and instead of emailing stuff back and forth, it's all in a centralized location. Um, to get into teams, excuse me, teamwork meetings, uh, you just click there and you're in. Uh, if you want to do, uh, and, and that does your video conferencing, if you want to do a business EMS, uh, excuse me, SMS, what you've got, it looks like this. You go business SMS, this is direct messages, is what they call it. Uh, you go in and you just put in a phone number and you can send them a text message and it comes back from your business phone number, which instead of your cell phone, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is the other screen that you would use if you want to do events. This is if you want to set up what we call collaboration, which is screen sharing more or less, and, and you've got the ability to, to go through and you know and, and bring that up. So when you once you go into to, to meetings, this pops up. This is Mike's meeting. Um, what happens here is I would enter in now the video settings are there. It works very similar to Zoom and Teams to where you're able to do a, a, you know, a video conference very easily for up to 16 people on one screen. Uh, you know, but uh, that that works out very well. I mean, you've got, you know, I guess 16 pane, multi-pane viewing, but, you know, it integrates with your your mail, you know, so that you have all your calendar, all that stuff takes care of, and then you can record calls, you can do everything you can do. I think that the thing that's cool about it is this is just another option you can use. Uh, you know, there there's so many out there, but this just brings it back to a single login, so you don't have to log into Zoom or Teams or anything like that. Um, and then basically it's very, very secure. That's the big reason for it. It's using WebRTC, like everything Mitel has. So it's developed by Mitel and is a really good solution. Um, we also integrate a bunch of apps, you know, uh, things like the business apps, you know, like everything from Salesforce to Dynamics to, you know, Zendesk, NetSuite, you know, all those things, Zoom, Teams, I mean, uh, integration, 
you know, very, very easily into the, all these different ones. And the Salesforce one is one that a lot of people really like. It's a very native integration, you know, so you've got a soft phone that's actually built into um, Salesforce. So when you bring up the Salesforce screen, once again, on a single login, um, you know, it automatically connects a soft phone. So you've got a whole transfer of, of the phone log and a built-in soft phone. So when you make and receive calls, the caller ID is you know, from the office, not from your phone. So once again, we're back to a single login, click the call, call recording. Uh, the recordings go right into the Salesforce records. I mean, it works out very well. So why would you want to use Mitel for cloud communications? I mean, they, they can reduce the complexity with a single login. I mean, that's, that's pretty big, a big deal for talk, chat, and video. And it's in the Google Cloud platform. It pays for itself because, you know, if you're using a phone system today with phone circuits and everything, all that goes away. So, I mean, it's very inexpensive at starting at $20 a user a month. You work with Mitel directly, and so you reduce all IT responsibility for telecommunications. And you have an easy-to-use portal that comes with live tech support. So you're able to provide uh, in-office experience for talk, chat, and video from anywhere on any device which works out really well, especially if you're mobile. Everything's mobile today. So the mobile app works very well. It's got counter integration, peer-to-peer -peer video. It also has multi-point video. I don't have that on here, but PBX features, you know, like, you know, transfer hold, page, all those type of things. And it works over Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G, and provides instant messaging and presence, which is pretty cool. On any device, anywhere. Uh, it integrates to your Outlook, it integrates to Gmail, and that works out very well for calendaring and tracking things and integrating them. Now, when you start talking about Google, Google and Mitel have a really good partnership together. One of the things that they've done is so, you know, trying to get away from apps and use things more like WebRTC. Along those lines, there is a Google Chrome plugin that provides you with a soft phone and extension. So you're not having to open an app. If you've got a Chromebook or something, you know, all you have to do in Chrome is it, it gives you a little icon up here, a little phone. When you click on that, up comes, you know, a screen that shows you the ability to be able to, you know, track, I mean, excuse me, make and receive calls. I mean, you're able to add, get into conference calls, listen to your voicemails. These are all from just, you know, any device that's running Chrome. I mean, it's a Chrome plugin. It's free. You know, so you can create your frequent call numbers and manage calls, put them on hold, transfer, do conference calls, everything right there with right, the G Suite integration. Hardware is really kind of cool with Mitel. I mean, they make all their own phones. That's why they bought Astra. Ago. So they have a very robust feature, rich accessories I mean, you can add to it. It's got a very modern look to it, you know. So that that's our, the 640, which is a, a 6940, which is a touchscreen phone, comes standard with a Bluetooth handset, and, and it's very slick. You can add for, you know, everything's less than $5 a month. You can add a, a, a deck headset, which gives you a 300-foot range and plugs in just like Legos. Um, it plugs both into the 6940 as well as the 6930 can take a headset. You can, take a, you can upgrade to the wireless handset if you want to uh, and add busy lamp fills. I mean, it's pretty slick. And then it starts with the 6920, which is the most basic set, and that's the one that's free that comes with it. As I said, you can add things to them almost like Legos. You want to add a handset. You want to add an expansion module. You want to add a you know, wireless headset. Now, if you need a wireless LAN adapter, they have one. So if you have an area where you've got Wi-Fi but you don't have cabling for a phone, that's, that's good to go with power over Ethernet and everything. And then they've got Bluetooth speaker phones, which will talk to the other phones and allow you to be able to move them around and record us Bluetooth, right? And, and as you can see, there's also a stationary speaker phone with 16 mics in it, which is very cool. It's got an Android touchscreen, so you can integrate and bring up all your different apps and play them you know, back in it has an HDMI connection to go straight to your your uh, television monitor in your, in your conference room. But like I said, the, the 720 talks to any of the phones and automatically with Bluetooth. We also have access to all the Polycom phones for your speaker phones, for your conference rooms, and whatever it takes to make things you know, what you need for when you need it, you know. So why my Cloud Connect? Well, okay, the main reason, Google Cloud Platform, that's a really, really, uh, that's where things are kind of going. Um, I think that's a very secure and very reliable way to go to approach voice. Um, so you've got, uh, you know, that you've got Indian encryption, which is huge. You've got integration to your business apps like Salesforce. You got less responsibility for IT for everything, including software upgrades. You got just possibly the lowest cost per user, uh, in the industry. Uh, so what are the options? How much does it cost? Well, when you start looking at, there's really three seats, you know, essentials, premier and elite, um, you know, starting at, like I said, around $20 a user a month, it depends on how many you know, ports you want for conferencing, pretty much that's the big difference there. And then down here you see voicemail to email transcription, that moves you up, you know, five dollars, six bucks, something like that. By the time you get done, click the call from a web dialer, um, you know, on-demand recording. So you hit a button to record everything and 
you know, that works out great. The only reason you go to the, the elite is if you had a console operator. I think that's the biggest one. You want to archive a bunch of stuff that you don't have servers for as far as call recording. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's, that's everything you get. The phones, and they're like nothing. The 6920 is free. The 6930 was self with mobile integrations, like only $2. And then the touch screen top of the line was only five with a $5 headset. And, and keep in mind, all this pricing is pretty much, you know, was priced, meaning that we can actually do better than that if we need to. So I'm really asking you to, to reach out and give us a shot, you know, and try to buy local and support Austin. You know, I mean, it's getting kind of old watching some of these companies that have, have gone down the ring central and gone down the dial path, gone down some of these these paths and had all kinds of problems and wouldn't anybody local do anything about it. So people just kind of put up with stuff that doesn't work. We're here in Austin, you know, we're very proud of Austin. We're very proud of the fact that the product's made here. We really just want to be, you know, have the ability to help you communicate simply. Once again, Brookside, talk, chat, video, and connectivity solutions. Give me a call. I'm serious. I'd love to help you, you know, reduce your cost per user and, and basically, as well as your complexity.